Have you ever wondered how generational wealth is maintained for so long? The term old money often differentiates a specific group of elites from the rest of the wealthy, and this group has developed ways to ensure their wealth lives way longer than theirs. How are they able to build generational wealth? And what methods do they use to make it happen? Make sure to stick around until the end, as we will answer these questions and more as we look at how old money preserves their wealth. Old money, or generational wealth as it is often described, is exactly how it sounds. These elites want their wealth to stay within their family for many generations, and as a result, they work to increase their wealth while ensuring that their spending isn't extravagant. Families inheriting generational wealth tend to save their money rather than spend it all and strive to ensure it remains within the family. As newer generations are born, they inherit money from the older generation's investments and savings, which often amounts to many millions or billions. One great example of an old money elite is Sam Walton, the founder and owner of Walmart, was raised in a family possessing generational wealth. When Sam Walton passed away, his already wealthy family was worth about $23 billion, and this wealth was saved and passed on as new generations were born. The saving habit of old money elites doesn't appear out of the blue. This habit has been cultivated over many generations and passed on along with the wealth itself. Compared to most people with new wealth who don't amass a vast fortune upon their death, old money adds to the wealth of the past rather than using it up. New money elites are likelier to spend or donate a considerable portion of their income throughout their lives as they aren't used to having money at their disposal. Old money elites have been wealthy all their lives, and as a result, they can plan and save for a future that doesn't have them in it, compared to new money elites who find it more difficult. Elites with generational wealth have been raised to know and understand the importance of planning and saving for the future, not theirs, but that of the family because they have always been wealthy and have never really had to cope with major financial struggles. All the planning and saving habits learned very early make it easier for them to live their lives without spending extravagantly while working on adding to their wealth. All investments are considered smart as long as you constantly earn from them, especially when the losses aren't as much as the profits. However, that line of thinking is one that old money elites don't subscribe to for the most part and there are several reasons for that. One thing that makes old money elites so prestigious is their ability to tell when a business idea will be profitable in the long run. They aren't planning to invest and get their returns in a couple of years. They set up investment plans with the hope that the business idea would ultimately build up over many years, decades even, and by then, their investments will yield significant returns. Old money elites usually commit to long-term wealth preservation instead of short-term gains. This is because they understand that their wealth is fickle and that a single-minded focus on instant profits can set all their hard work ablaze and lead to the eventual erosion of their wealth. As newer generations come along, they enjoy the benefits of the investments made by the older generation and have a more frugal consumption because they aren't so sure they can recreate that fortune. That way, they direct more effort to make more money instead of spending the wealth, so they aren't guilty about being born rich. That mindset is a very vital part of what it means to be an old money elite. Apart from that, investments made by old money elites aren't just unidirectional or risky high-risk, high-reward investments. They invest in building a safe, solid financial foundation for themselves and the generations that follow. As a result, they spread their investments over a range of asset classes, such as stocks, bonds, real estate, and commodities, hoping to reduce the risk of losing it all in a single stroke of misfortune. Old money elites would instead put their capital in business ventures with predictable and constant returns instead of chasing after the latest investment scheme or speculative venture. By concentrating on several reliable investments, they can ensure a stable stream of income that ultimately helps preserve their wealth. Old money elites aren't about doubling their wealth as soon as possible. Instead, they are more focused on building their wealth to be more than what they met when they took over. Certain assets such as cars, clothes, and the like depreciate over time in business. However, when it comes to real estate, this asset takes a different route as it is known to appreciate over time 
doubling or even tripling in price within several years. While that is greatly dependent on many factors like location and such, there is no doubt that real estate is one of the best ways to spend one's money, especially when their sights are set on a more affluent future rather than a comfortable present. This might seem like new or recent information to some people, or even new money elites. Still, old money elites have known this for centuries and have passed it on to their newer generations. Real estate has been a favored asset class for the old money elite for a long time, as it offers many benefits that make it the perfect wealth preservation tool. One of these benefits is that old money elites often own and manage a multi-generational real estate portfolio that has been in their families for many decades, centuries even. These properties serve as a family income source and a tangible sign of their wealth and social standing. There are many instances of old money elites who purchased and built properties many decades ago. Now, their properties depict their wealth and are a source of income for the family. One of these is the Winterthur Estate in Delaware, owned by the DuPont family, one of the oldest and wealthiest old money elites in America, which was built in the early 20th century. This 1,000-acre estate, which also has a 175-room mansion, has been in the family for many years, serving not only as a residence, but also as a museum, displaying the family's impressive collection of American decorative arts. The Winterthur estate has served as a source of income for the DuPont family and a symbol of their wealth and influence. In Britain, being a landed gentry is what it means to be old money. These are a historical British social class of landowners who could live solely from rental income or at least had a country estate. Even after many decades or centuries, these elites are still some of the wealthiest in the country. For example, the Duke of Westminster owns vast swaths of properties in London, including 100 acres of Mayfair and 200 acres of Belgravia, and that's just one example. One of the many ways that old money elites have been able to preserve their wealth is by implanting themselves in the political system of their countries and gaining more influence to build their wealth. Most times this happens naturally, especially when these old money families happen to be one of the founding members of the town, state, or country. These old money families acquire large expanses of land in an undeveloped area, and the area develops around their properties, making them significant members of that community. From there, it becomes easier for them to gain political influence and standing in that community, and even further. One example is the Byrd family of Virginia, whose ancestor, William Byrd, first received a 1,200-acre grant at the fall line of the James River in 1673, which later became the site of Richmond, Virginia. His son, William Byrd II, expanded the family's holdings to about 179,000 acres and founded the city of Richmond. Many generations later, members of this family held the positions of speakers in the Virginia House of Delegates, Governor of Virginia, members of the U.S. Senate, and many other political positions. The Byrd family also controlled a democratic political machine called the Byrd Organization that dominated Virginia politics for a vast part of the 20th century. This is just one example of an old money family that developed significant political influence over the years and still maintains it. There is also the Carter family, the Corbin family, the Delano family, the Griswold family, and many others. As simple as this sounds, it is a critical method of preserving wealth for old money elites. These elites understand that they can't build wealth alone, and as such, they search for viable business partners who can contribute to their cause and make it much more prosperous than it would have been if it was just them involved in it. This networking has created many successful businesses and global empires, which shows how effective it is when done correctly. Another aspect of networking that was practiced by old money families is marriage. These elite families often ensure that they get their children to marry, which joins pretty wealthy families into one super wealthy union. This has been used to revive dying business empires or save a nearly bankrupt old money family from disgrace. Lastly, old money elites use these methods in combination with their well-preserved mentality to ensure that their family wealth stays within the family and doesn't decrease in any way. Many old money families also consider education and financial literacy very important, especially in newer generations, ensuring they understand the necessity for careful money management 
and are equipped to make intelligent financial decisions. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Till next time.